Hello and welcome to YouTube channel Health Cube, the place where our mission is not only to motivate you but help you to move on to the brighter side of the health. I am your host physiotherapist Meghna Dave and in today's video I'm going to explain you how your senses, your sensory system is a very important part or integral part of your ability to stay functionally independent or as you can say move. Now why you should know this? Definitely you should know this because if you are suffering from pain or any related challenges where your ability to move or do any sort of movement is impacted, this thing is going to give you a very important understanding. So if you who are someone who wants to understand your body, if you are someone who is curious to know how the complex systems of the body works, especially in terms of movement, if you are an enthusiast, or else if you are someone who is suffering from repeated chronic aches and pains or any sort of movement related challenges and you are thinking how I can work on this then this video is definitely a must watch for you. So on that note let's begin today's video and understand the role of sensory system in your movement. Let's get started. So friends, whenever we have any sort of pain or if we think of any movements in general, we think that yes, the muscles in our body, the joints in our body and the bones in our body, they are responsible to cause this. We very rarely put attention to the senses or the sensory system which plays a very crucial role in our ability to move. Now, just take this example that whenever you are walking on the path, right? And if you see an obstacle coming on your path, what you're going to do? You're going to shift or you're going to make some adjustment in your body, right? To cross that path. Why does that happen? How you got the judgment? You got this judgment on your sensory system's understanding, right? That's why your sensory system is very crucial. Again, let me reverse this process. Imagine you are blindfolded and now you have to walk. How scared you would be to walk? Isn't your speed going to be affected? Of course it's going to be affected. Why? Because a very important sensory organ and that is your eyes is being blocked. So yes, that suggests that the sensory system of our body plays a very crucial role in making your movements right. So if your movements are altered, somewhere your sensory system is also altered. And this applies not only in the pain condition like back pain, knee pain, ankle pain, etc. But it also applies in neurological disorders like stroke, Parkinson's disease, facial paralysis or uh, vestibular disorder like vertigo, etc. So it's important that if you understand the role of your sensory system, you can utilize a lot of practices in your day-to-day -day lifestyle to improve or to use your sensory system in the right manner that helps you to work on your movements. So let's first understand what is sensory system, right? So all the movements that we do is beginning with the sensory system. That means your body registers information based on the environment you are, based on your understanding that you have and based on the previous experiences that were already registered in your brain. All of these things which are complex are judged, are analyzed by your brain and then the brain decides or creates the code of movement how you're going to do and that feedback comes to your movement system and that's how you make the movement. So that's what a sensory system all about and sensory system is made up of many aspects. Sensory system, if you see, is first made up of the receptors. Receptors are the end nerve endings, which are the points from where all this information are started. These receptors could be on your skin, it could be on your joints, it could be on your muscles, it could be on your uh, periphery or core region, it could be present at multiple places. After receptors, we have got nerves. Now, these nerves are the messengers. So, receptors are the places from where all this information, so these receptors are nothing but the nerve endings and some extra cells that are present in the body. These receptors are like messengers, they capture all the information 
from the areas that we see pull it forward captures it keep it towards the nerve or bring it towards the nerve now nerve act as messenger or is that pipe from where all this information is taken towards your central nervous system your central nervous system is your spinal cord the central cord from where all this nerves are being gathered together and then these messages move upward to your brain at brain we have different brain areas different brain structures in one of my previous video i've already mentioned different parts of the brain and how it works and in that brain structure all the processing happens all the understanding happens and those brain structure then decodes all the information that is captured and give it to the motor system now along with your receptors along with your nerves along with your spinal cord we also have senses the major senses that we have got in our body what are these senses vision is a sense hearing is a sense smell is a sense your touch is a sense right your sense of you being present in relation to the body is also a sensation which is called as proprioception right and your balancing sense which is controlled by your vestibular system so there are different sensory organs that are present in the body like your eyes your nose your ears your joint receptors your vestibular system all of these things work in collaboration to each other to send the information to the brain in the right accurate manner there it processes and that processing is then converted into a movement and that's how a sensory system collaborate and causes a movement now let me give you a simple example to give you an understanding on this again let's say you are planning to walk you want to get up let's say i get up from this chair now what is the movement i'm going to do i'm going to get up in this way right now what do you think what the system would have worked here right first the information itself or that willingness came inside my mind or is that command came inside my mind that yes i have to get up now my brain uses my previous experiences to analyze that wherever i'm sitting in the space is the right situation where i'm able to get up now comes the role of your sensory system so my eyes basically figures out where am i sitting are there any obstacles in front of me right when my eye is able to visualize that yes there are no other obstacles i would be able to get up easily then i move forward my eyes is also seeing that i have some arm rest on the sides which i can give or as uh, which i can take support of right then when i am sitting i'm also getting a sense of these muscles or as of these proprioceptors which gives me a sense that yes my knee is folded right now i am sitting right now how do i come to know that i am sitting i am not seeing myself the proprioceptors that are present in my hip joint are giving me that message that yes i am sitting my legs are folded and in order to get up my legs needs to get straight i am also getting a lot of feedback from my vestibular system that yes my head is erect my body is erect and i am sitting in this direction in relation to the environment all of this information came from the different sensory system that are present in the body so now when i am again standing my eyes can see that yes my dimension has changed i am standing now everything is seen little more in an elevated plane to me apart from that my proprioceptors that are present in the hip me an ankle is giving me the sense of the pressure that is falling on the ankle gives me the sensation that yes i am standing erect and my vestibular system also gives me an understanding yes my neck is erect is in relation to the surrounding in the right place so this was the role of sensory system in defining the movement so here my nerve endings or my receptors my different sensory organs my previous memory of movements and the previous past learning experiences that i had and apart from that my vestibular system all of these things work in unison to cause this one movement so these are the reasons why we are also able to make adjustment 
Imagine while I am trying to get up and there is a slight movement in the chair and I feel that yeah, okay, the chair is going backward. I'm getting that sensation and immediately what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my chair back again. I'm going to make myself a little bit more taut and alert and then I'm going to sit. So your sensory system is also capable of changing the dimensions or is the level of muscle contractions that are happening depending on all the information that it is able to gather. That's why your adjustments that you make while walking, while sitting, while standing, while sleeping, all of this is dependent on the sensations or the information that your sensory system captures before you do the movement. Right now, imagine what will happen if these functions are not happening properly. Then it leads to different health issues, and we start considering them as injury or as a problem, and we start looking for solution. Let's begin with the problem with your sensation itself. What if your vision is impaired? What if you are not able to see clearly from far? If that is the case, you won't be able to judge what obstacles are ahead of you and you might either go just mindlessly forward and bang yourself. This happens many a times when we are walking very fast and there is a glass in front of us and it's so transparent that we are not able to judge it and people directly bang on it. Isn't it? It happens many a times. Why? Why do you think that leads to that movement? Because you are not able to judge your speed. You are not able to stop in front of the mirror. Why? Because your eye was not able to judge that obstacle. So imagine if your vision is impaired. The most easiest thing to imagine is when you are keep keeping your eyes closed and you are trying to walk, you will see the change in your speed. In this, uh, you will see the change in your confidence level. You will see the change in how your muscles feel when you are walking. Similarly, many a times the hearing thing, right, or is the volume, the noise that's falling on your ear also determines how you move or is how you sit or how you function. Have you ever observed, suddenly if a loud noise comes, we just shackle? What happens that, right? This is a very primitive response that's present inside our body, which is called a straddle response. Now, this is present in babies, but as we grow up, it kind of fades away. But still, if there is a sudden and a very loud noise that is coming, then we still shackle, right? So this is again, that changes our posture, that changes our movement. A sound determines your movement. Imagine the honk that is coming when you are walking on the road and someone honks from behind. You will change your path, isn't it? Why? Because you utilize your hearing sensation to change that movement. That's what happens. Now, coming from that, let's move on to the vestibular system. The biggest problem that happens due to impairment of vestibular system is we feel spinning. We feel that everything is moving around. Why? Because your vestibular system is at fault, it's not functioning, and that's where the face or else the head feels that it's not stable in one position. And we feel that we are moving and the surrounding is also moving around us. That's happened when your vestibular system is at fault. Imagine your proprioceptor system or is the nerve endings that are present on your joint is at fault. Imagine if that is not proper, then I will not get the information that my hips are bent while I'm sitting. I will not get the sensation of my legs being bent when I'm sitting. That is going to impact my ability to balance. It's going to impact my ability to sit in a comfortable way. And it's going to also impact the way my muscles are going to function. Same way, your touch sensation. If you're sitting on something very hot, right? But if you're not able to feel that hotness, what's going to happen? You'll keep on sitting there, right? And you will develop burns. Many people with impaired sensitivity develop pressure sores, ulcers on their skin region just because they are not able to sense the sensation. So, if you who are someone who is thinking that I am suffering from chronic pain, I am suffering from movement related challenges due to paralysis or due to muscle weakness or due to some disease, you are 
missing out on a very important part that yes your sensory system is also at play and if you utilize your sensory system well you can work on improving your symptoms now let me first list down some common problems that impact or as conditions that are directly related to the poor sensory functioning right and then we will talk about how we can utilize our sensory system in a very smart way how we can create those hacks that allow you to stay very stable to stay very strong despite some problems being existed right so let me start first with coordination challenges people who have got ataxia people who have got stroke people who have got damage in the brain areas like the sensory cortex or as the cerebral cortex right they develop problem which is called as sensory ataxia a very common problem where the patient or as an person find difficulty in coordination they are not able to hold one position and they are not able to stabilize themselves people with resting tremors people with intentional tremors what happens the feedback loop itself is at fault so if we have to improvise on them we need to start working at first place on feedback the more pressure that we apply on the muscles the more stability exercises that we do the more feedback goes to the brain and that's how the training begins the next common problem that people experience is vertigo very common right people feel dizziness people feel spinning all people feel imbalances again in all these scenarios the feedback loop which is your vestibular system is at fault again people with listening or as hearing disabilities or people with visual disabilities also face problem with their movements their muscles are more tight compared to the other group of muscles because they are constantly scared and skeptical while moving especially in terrains which are uneven that happens which on a chronic basis leads to a lot of muscular pain and aches apart from that people with chronic pain what happens to them they have faulty proprioceptor system because repeatedly they are not getting the right feedback because the muscles are chronically staying tight they are not in the right position so if something that needs to be corrected it needs to be started from here so now this was an information and understanding about your sensory system now let's try and understand what all things you can do to hack your sensory system to work on your sensory system that allows you to work on your symptom now whenever it comes to physiotherapy we basically works on three most important aspect number one is your pain number two is your posture or is your ability to sit stand walk and third is your movement your functionality in all these three scenarios three most important thing that needs to be there is you should have a good muscular relaxation what do i mean by that your muscles should not be overly tight or is your muscles should not be overly relaxed or flappy second thing your positioning should be in such a way that your muscles are utilized in right manner that muscles are sending the right information you are getting those right information in the brain that gives you the sensation of right patterns right movement comfortable movement not necessarily that you should always sit erect or you should always stay stand no not necessarily it could vary but what does this mean that you should be utilizing your all body system in a wise manner and third is your movements your functions right now to achieve all this three balance you need to utilize your sensory system well so doing eye exercise on a regular basis makes sure that your eye or your vision is in alignment doing breathing exercise on a regular basis make sure that your muscles are oxygenated enough right and your muscles are not taut due to all the influences that are falling on the sensory system you must have heard people say that it's very good to walk on the grassland why do you think so definitely it's good for your eyes but it also stimulates your sensory receptors on your foot which kind of activates and gives a sense of different textures and how your body aligns with that so doing exercise especially weight bearing exercise plays a very crucial role in activating your proprioceptors in activating your sensory system in activating your vestibular system 
right? So that's why doing exercise is a very important and key role, not only in order to maintain a good health and well-being, but also while working on your acute or this chronic condition. Many a times I see patients, especially people who suffer from pain, leave their exercise, stop doing all the precautions that we suggest during our sessions after their pain is gone. But unfortunately, what happens, 60% of them, that pain comes back. Why? Because they don't follow these steps. They don't understand that pain is just a sign. It's just a symptom. It's not the problem which you can cure. The problem is with all these things and that needs to be worked on. So if you who are someone who is suffering from chronic pain or has any neuromuscular disorder like stroke, muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's disease, etc. Make sure to start doing weight bearing exercise, staying physically active, but because not it's going to make your muscles strong. Definitely it's going to, but moreover that, it's going to activate your sensory system in the right way. So on that note, I would like to invite you to reach out to us and connect with us because we have a team of amazing physiotherapists who can identify your chronic muscular problem and can give you that right solution which is not maybe straightforward but will incorporate a lot of lifestyle modification so whether you're suffering from chronic pain or else whether you're suffering from parkinson's disease facial paralysis any of these things this principles doesn't change but if you apply these principles without spending much money without spending much time just sitting at home and doing some simple lifestyle modification and exercises you can deal with your pain, your chronic symptoms. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, make sure to like this video, share this video with your friends and family members, and do not forget to subscribe to Health Channel. I'll see you in another video. Thank you.